Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial about oil painting and executing some non-metallic metal. We've got another one of the Dolgodor 9. This is from Forge World. Painted this one up on stream. I think I'll actually just throw a link to that in the description maybe so you can see that. It was a lot of fun and since this one the armor is just so similar to it, just give an extra sword. I thought, well, what the heck? Why don't we try and do this? And a little bit of a tutorial video here for you guys. Now, we'll have that reference over here on the side. Here's a few more pictures of our previous one right there. Now, I think I'll continue with the textured cloth because why not? Uh, it's it's The cloth here is kind of rough anyways, so why not have some of that same texture on it as well? And what we're going to be using is our oil paints over here. Let's uh, just talk about what's on the palette. This is We call this our opaque alley up here. You got your white brilliant yellow pale this is actually a little bit of cadmium yellow deep but this is a non-cadmium cadmium it's not one of those nasty cadmium hues it's, it's the real deal just not the cadmium so it dries a little bit more normally and not so slow terra rosa over here some fanchion red over here now these guys over here the reason i got the tubes out is just so you could see these I don't have these in the jars yet because they're they're new we're still trying them out testing them doing a lot of different things we filmed a whole bunch of Patreon tutorials so far with these and also have done some live sessions, but I think this might be the first regular video where we're using these guys. So they're from Gamut, not expensive, just a series two. These in many ways they, they function a lot like the brilliant yellow pale. It's just sort of a different color tone. Now these you see all the time. You got our indigo, black spinel, little Van Dyke Brown. You got some Indian yellow sitting down here, S Fultum over here. We'll be using those on the cloak. And then we got some Prussian blue and a little bit of our uh, perline black. That's that dark green. See what I just did there? I said I dropped a couple little... All this is is the same high-quality odorless paint thinner that we use from Mona Lisa. It's been really sensational on so many levels. Here, let's... Uh, again, we just sometimes put a little dot on these quickly because I don't have my jars anymore, right? Don't have those jars made... I, mean, I use these really just as a visual reference so that you guys can read the labels. I don't actually use these anymore. They are long since empty. Long since empty. Now, what we're going to have to do is put a pre-glaze on this. What does that mean? It means we're going to throw some darker colors on there. And we actually have another, I think this is the tainted right here. So think of this. It was originally primed a lighter color. Now, this was the Steinol Res Oceanic Blue mixed with probably the Light Flight. Yeah, Oceanic Blue. Steinorus. I just brushed this on, I don't know, maybe an hour ago, something like that. This right here was just, I think, the Steinorus light flesh, and then we did uh, Van Dyke Brown and some other uh, stuff over the top of it. Uh, I didn't actually even wipe that away. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put that on here, and we're going to wipe it with our makeup sponge, which has been sliced into a whole bunch of smaller pieces right here. And what that does, it doesn't just create a zenithal. That's not what we're after. We're actually after getting some darks down into the crevices, but we want something we can actually mix with all these lighter colors that we got here. Remember with oils, these lighter opaque colors, well, they cover because they're opaque. It's not like uh, not like acrylics where it's almost the other way around. So that, well, that's what we're going to do next is we're going to get that pre-glaze going. We'll take our chopped up sponges. We're going to get those darker colors down, get this set up for all of our wonderful non-metallic metal stuff. going to do that next. It's pre-glaze time, which we are going to have to approach in a little bit more of a careful method because I already got this on a base that's painted. That usually is not what I do. Typically, the base is painted at the same time as the figure, but it actually is part of a, a tutorial that I did on this type of base. I've also been using it for my Gondor stuff here. So again, another example of the painted base. The roller itself, uh, it's a green stuff world texture roller and some cork underneath that. So again, that's another one of my Patreon tutorials there. But the focus here is on the miniature. On the figure, we're going to take a little bit of our Van Dyke Brown, some of that indigo here. That is going to be the start of our metal color here. So we're just going to put a little bit there on the shoes because, well, metal there. Again, normally I'd use a bigger brush right here, but I'm trying to well, also a little bit less of the liquid here, trying to keep any sort of potential spatter contained. Now, anybody that knows 
anything about the this pre-glaze right here it can get a little bit spattery so we're just we're trying to keep that a little bit uh, to a minimum here pre-glaze also means we have to think about staining versus non-staining colors and what the heck does that mean uh, don't worry there's not a long list of staining colors it's like a handful there's indigo there's your uh, perlene black prussian blue over here now actually terra rosa is ironically enough uh, phthalo green is one of those phthalo blue is another one uh, telling you the uh, indian yellow ironically enough as light as it is also basically a staining color what that means and you'll see it not too long from now is that when we remove the paint or we go to remove the paint a staining color you're going to get more of that left behind whereas say earth tones which is to say just about anything that's brown or has any relationship to brown yeah that's just going to wipe away that's not going to not going to do a whole lot of staining for you not really a lot of reds that actually do much in the way of staining either so there's not many colors that do that so and they tend to be on the darker side. Indian yellow is one of those uh, oddities. It's a, it's an exception rather than the norm, no doubt about it. So I've just I've done my indigo there. Now we're going to take ourselves some Van Dyke brown. This particular Van Dyke brown has a little bit more of a staining possibility than some of the others. But you see here too, I've got actually less liquid in this. I'm just going to be practically dry brushing this on. See how little paint there is on that brush? the more of the thinner that you have in there well you're just more likely to wipe a lot of it away and we don't we don't need that we don't need that actually this black spinel as opposed to things like oh gosh especially ivory black or those type of blacks if you leave it on there for maybe 5 10 15 minutes you might get a little bit of staining out of it and by staining i mean again some of it gets left behind when you go to wipe it off with the sponges that that's all it means like I said, there is no long list of those colors. That, the list is very short. The list of our allies grows thin. The list of your staining colors is thinner than your allies. So, yes, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And you can mix the colors up, too. It's, you could mix asphaltum and phthalo green and get yourself sort of an interesting, very warm, almost like a forest green somewhat staining color because you got a little bit of that phthalo green in there you could take maybe phthalo blue and some black that uh, would create a darker staining color but then you could always just use indigo which is a very cheap color and then you don't even have to buy the second one so i, I don't have lots of colors okay there we go now what i could do is just leave this just to sit here and not dry but what i call set we just leave it to set now what i am going to do here is grab those sponges now we've got some different size ones because we've cut this into about nine parts or so i mean what the heck Let, let's just do it here we'll just grab ourselves the scissors i don't usually show this on camera but i just want to make sure the miniature is out of the way but we're just gonna cut this here get somewhere between i don't know seven to eight pieces out of this I used to think, what the heck good is this? Believe it or not, actually, I use those more and more and more. Oh, to get into small areas like this. Without, I mean, this is a Forge World thing. This is Forge World resin, which means super, super fragile, easily breakable, brittle. All the wonderful things about Forge. So see, we got some of that paint removed. Now, the larger ones like this, well, that's good for these more open areas but here you could see there's a little bit less of this left behind see a lot of that's coming away that's because it's more of an earth tone and not big with the staining but here with the indigo it's a different story and the longer we leave this on you get even more of it but again having a lot of these little sponges is great because well they start to pick up the paint and we're not looking to transfer say the the blue to where the brown is see it, it almost becomes a bit like a zenithal but the difference zenithal is something you just paint on that figure and then spend the rest of your time painting over it here we're going to be painting with it big difference it 
believe it or not, it did actually saves a ton of time because when I put those slightly lighter colors into this, boy, does it make a difference because it tints those lighter colors that we're putting on. Now, where's my Ossiarchs here? This is one of my painting series for the Patreon page right here. All of this skeletal stuff. You can see there's, look at that, there's almost like a bluish color there, almost red over here. You got some yellow there. You see how all of that, that skeletal stuff is just different tones everywhere you turn. Look, I'll leave a little bit of green over there. I did the same thing that I did here, only I threw lots of different colors and then wiped them away with the sponge. And then all I had to do was just essentially dry brush over the top of them with some lighter oil paints. And in a matter of 15 minutes or so, that there were people that said, yeah, you had me after 15 minutes. Because it wasn't just some kind of, oh, spray it, bleached bone, and then throw Devlin mud over the top of it. No, there was, you can see how much more color actions going on with that thing. And here, at the, yeah, you can see there's a little bit of that brownish tint, and this is a little bit more blue. But what we are going to do now, that we've got this pretty much set and ready to go, we're going to, well, we're going to start to add some of those lighter mid-tones. Might see some of those radiance for sure. And what I like to do is try and get this to where you could say, all right, you know what, that's good enough at that stage. Or I could just bring that to a game at that stage, let it dry, or let it dry, take it to a game and come back later and paint more. But as you can see, we got to, we've got our lighter colors to add, and we're going to do that next. To add in those lighter colors, more dry brush. And I'm going to start out here with some of that radiant turquoise. Again, this is from Gamlin Rider. You could, in theory, take white and mix it with maybe a thalo green, thalo blue mix. But like the Brilliant Yellow Pale, it's more than just white mix, mix with yellow, which I always thought that's what Brilliant Yellow Pale was until I tried to make a similar mix. Didn't do the same thing. Now, look at this. We don't joke about less is more. And more is way too much. That is a serious dry brush there. Why? Because look at that. A couple of quick brush strokes. Look at all that dark stuff sitting on the end of the brush. That's that pre-glaze. Remember that looks so darn dry here. Looks like there's so little paint. Well, it's mixing already. That's that's your difference. You think what what's the difference between that and just a regular zenithal? Well, you're seeing it now. I, I try to do it this way because I think it just is more dramatically obvious. And this is by no means the lightest color either. We're essentially fooling around with middle tones here. I uh, see, see that uh, uh, it's darker on that brush. It's picking up. It's picking up that pre-glaze. Now I can maybe start to think about it in a little bit of white, but once again, keeping that paint to a minimum. These, uh, I think that other one that you saw, I mean, that was dry, I don't know, in 10 to 12 hours max. Why? Because we were not piling paint on it with a steam shovel. We kept that paint to a minimum. And that really is something you're going to want to do. Uh, it's, it's not that I really care about how long something takes to dry, because I'm working on so many different miniatures. It doesn't matter. I can get back around to it later. I'm working on tons of miniatures at any one time. Okay, so see that? There we go. We've got uh, an impression of some of our lighter tones. And some folks might say, ah, good enough. We will be taking that further, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Speaking of throwing stuff out there, how's about a little bit of our brilliant yellow pale? We'll mix that with some of our asphaltum here. And then that starts to become... Oh, a little bit of a color slash temperature change, a warmer brown. Now, here we don't need that. But, oh, look. See how easy it was to just wipe that whole thing away? That's the nifty thing about oils. There's no mistakes with oils. They're just makeup sponges because you could just take a makeup sponge and wipe that all away. Having done that with acrylics, I know that unless you catch it immediately, well, that's going to leave a mark, as they say. I'm going to go back over here to some of this Van Dyke Brown. 
And all we're looking to do is just get the ball rolling here. Just get things started. Uh, reflection on the underside of that blade better reflect the ground or or whatever. It's usually, it's going to be some kind of a warmer grayish brown. Uh, unless they're walking across a verdant field of green grass or a red tile floor or something like that, your reflected light on metal, ah, eh, your default, not so bad to just have it be some kind of a brownish, grayish, something like that. All right, so there we go. We've got, uh, again, some nice things established in no time at all. Quite literally, no time at all. Now, what we need to start to do is think, okay, where are these lighter lights going to go on here? I also have these little, basically little flames here, almost like little torch light. Not necessarily super strong object source lighting like some of the things that we've done, say, for our Aragorn here. These are a couple of 3D printed miniatures, actually. So this is a Kazadoom army that I'm working on. You'll be seeing some videos from that. And I think I also might do this Aragorn. I can print up another one, right? So I might also try and do a video on this Aragorn as well. Here, let's get him over there and get our dwarf out of the way. So again, let's start thinking about some of those lighter colors here. Let's. This is a ten zero liner here. Where's my Where's my eighteen zero? We'll grab a couple of those. Back to some of our radiant turquoise. We'll mix that with the smidge of white here. And let's just go for some of the most obvious places where we like to have some really light, some really light colors. Yeah, this is still not the final highlight, though. We're gonna we're gonna hang on to those. This is another important thing with your metals too. See, that's working its way all the way down his arm here. I, I just call it a chain of highlights, a chain of pearls, something like that effectively he's just wearing a whole bunch of cylinders on his arm so we sort of need to treat this as a cylinder and that's why it's going to be reflecting stuff this is actually believe it or not going to have to reflect his chest armor and the chest armor has to reflect the arm check out instagram there's an awful lot of armorers and cosplayers that where they're wearing actual armor the real deal and they're out in real environments Yo, you'd be amazed. You would be really surprised at what you see. It it's a what reflects. My goodness, it is just the people around them, the trees, the parking lot, a hundred yards away. All that stuff is reflected on their armor. I'm just going with the shinier look here because I thought it would be fun. I have a bazillion regular ring rates that I've been doing with the more shall we say aged armor tarnished armor whatever you want to call it and i thought the nine here these these guys are kind of he's a little bit more special when i give him a little different treatment so here look at that see uh, we're uh, breaking up some of those highlights you also notice that we're not we're not doing a whole bunch of layers right we kind of went with something that's a lot lighter yeah because we can just grab a blending brush and, and just kind of smooth all that out. And that's what we'll be doing. We just got to lay out again where we want some of this stuff. Figure out what's going on here with the armor on his fingers, on the back of his hand. Again, the arm here, cylinder. What we need to do is, it's not enough to just put a highlight on the edge we gotta do way more than that we have to do something like this to so basically create a horizon line and so we're gonna have to go back with some darks we also have to do some reflection there that sword needs to reflect on the armor the armor needs to reflect on the sword it's a lot of reflections back and forth let's do this one too uh, the same kind of a chain of highlights that we had on the other side, we're going to do that on this side too. And uh, I realized that initially it's just going to look like another bit of a mess. And you say, well, it doesn't look 
really spectacular. Patience. Patience is really important. We don't want to be hasty little hobbits. Don't be hasty little hobbits. More developing of that sense that this is a cylinder. We're also not going to use tons and tons of thinner. Well, I never really use tons and tons of thinner because this is not acrylics. It's not acrylic. We don't need a ton of thinner. Look at this here. This is like a couple of days worth of thinner. That's a water bottle cap. That's it. It's all that's in there. So it doesn't take very much at all. Every so often, maybe we'll put a little bit in there. You do have to keep in mind that with the oils, uh, you're not going to be able to dilute the, the oil paint. So, I don't know, just for the heck of it, you take this lighter color here, and you put a whole bunch of thinner in it. What you have is really thin, very light, radiant blue and white. You don't ha have a color that you can just sort of diminish and glaze on in places. No, it, it's going to be just as... It may not cover quite as well as that, but it's going to cover. It's still going to be mostly just white. So, yeah, you cannot dilute oil paints. You can thin them. They will be thinner. They'll maybe be easier to apply or more difficult if the previous layer is not thick enough. Look at, see, look at the difference. You thought that was a really light color there. It was sort of light. This is a much lighter color now. I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing here with the helmet. And then I guess the leading edge here will also get some of our lighter color on that too. Let's hit some of these top edges of the armor as well. I'm going to go back. Some of that bluish color there. Now we were talking about a blending brush earlier. Here we go. We got a basically a soft craft brush here that has no paint on it whatsoever. See that big old chunk right there? Now look what happens when we do that. Softens the edge of it. We'll do the same up here. Look at this on his helmet. Same thing. It will soften all that. This is why we didn't need to do a whole bunch of layers. This is where the speed comes from with the oil paints. And I got to say, in some ways, that they added realism, too, because you almost get a more true mix between the colors because, well, this is your palette. Right? Are we mixing a lot of colors over here? No, nah, not really. That That's not what we're doing. This is where the mixing happens you you'd be amazed you'd be amazed at the difference that it makes now down here what are we doing we're going back to that warmer brown here why because uh, i'm going to say this is really facing more towards the ground here more towards the ground now let's do some more of that on the armor here. so mostly as full a um, little bit of the van dyke brown we also have just a smidge of the brilliant yellow pale in there too i believe i am just gonna very briefly here grab some of this van dyke brown And just hit the edge of that sword there, just to sharpen that up. Edge edges are a big deal with the metal. You really have to have. I just I call it edge control. You you have to have a sharp edge there, otherwise not gonna look terribly sharp. All right, horizon line here. Now this is a bit more of a linear type of a deal because again it's a cylindrical shape. Get the underside here of the. Oh, we gotta. We added our lights. We're gonna add a couple of darks again. Thinking about. It's gotta reflect the surroundings. 
It's in the book of Wapple, actually. Uh, metal surfaces reflect their surroundings. Very important to keep that in mind. Let me see if I can get the the channel here a little bit lighter on that side. Because I can. Oops. Is this out? There it is. I forgot about this little guy over there. Again, it's just a constant. Plop that paint down there. Take another brush, move it around. Look at that. See what we just did right there? There was that brown that I just plopped in. All I had to do is take this blending brush and just one brush stroke. That was enough. It can be just that. There'd be people saying, um, okay, that's all I need to do. And I could just, I mean, you could stop right here we wouldn't necessarily have to do the textured cloth i'm just going to start to get the impression of it here where's my brilliant yellow pail makes it with the that's full time and the anti brown and we're just going to start to do this just a whole bunch of essentially horizontal lines here the nifty thing about the oils is it all these weird looking lines well i just let them sit there for 15 10 50 minutes ish something like that and then i'll take a well guess what the magic blending brush and then just hit those again like we did some of the the metals here fade some of these stronger lines and just leave an impression of the texture i mean this guy's only an inch and an eighth tall and it's a Lord of the Rings figure, so smaller. There. So this is we're just adding these, for the most part, just some lighter colors, keeping it simple. Nice and simple here. Let's get back to our radiant blue. Got, uh, got these uh, th three armor panels, it looks like, on his feet. Yeah. Well, this one only has the two that we can see anyway. I'm going to get me some more of my middle tone here. He's got that, I don't want to call it a belt buckle, but something along those lines. I'm going to try and squeeze in a little bit more of my lighter tone here. We, I, know, I think I just basically went with sort of a gold-ish look on the handles of the swords here. So I'm taking some terra rosa, some of the gold, just for lack of a better term, creating some amber colors there. Okay, letting it mix with the pre-glaze that's already there. Let's get this side too. Uh, I keep thinking, like, why is there so much more with the swords? He only, the other guy only has the one sword. So I, I don't know. Uh, I do have all of the nine. Uh, I will be doing some other tutorials. Kamul the Easterling, my favorite of the Nazgul, of course. Well, that's going to be a Patreon tutorial, actually. So let's see if I can... Start to add some lighter colors to my gold here. It's a, very much the same thing we did elsewhere. We're just letting the the pre-glaze and some of the color we just threw on there mix with this. Now it's got sort of a square shape down here on the pommel of the sword. That's a little bit different than what you normally see. Let's get some of that reflected light over here. Let's hit the hummel uh, on this side as well. So you could, after this stage, just say, ah, good enough. That is, that's plenty good enough. I'll stop right there. You can, you could spend hours more or anything in between. 
your miniature your way. You do what you want to do, whatever, well, whatever you can do. These are as much about possibilities and ideas as they are about anything else. See, that should, doesn't need to be lit. This needs to be lighter here. See, I just uh, said, ah, the heck with that. Just wiped it away with my hand. And it was all better in no time. Now we can maybe throw a little bit more of a lighter color here on some of our gold. So these particular liner brushes, these brushes, these just come from, uh, it's a Princeton, Princeton Velvet Touch. The only reason I got these is because my usual Cotman brushes, they were out of stock for quite a while. And well, I needed something and I gave these a try. And now the liner brushes worked really well. The the filbert brushes also i was surprised about those try getting some spotters and those died the same kind of death that all spotters die in a hurry so yeah i just you're not going to be seeing me using too many more spotters anymore that's that's uh i think the days of the spotters uh, it's just like the the day of the orc sort of came and went the days of the spotter they came and they went and they're pretty much gone forever the it's the fourth age of painting now, and we're just using our using our liner brushes here again. This is what I had used again since I was a watercolorist by trade and training. Liner brushes, that was something that I used all the time. So I was no stranger to the liner brushes. Also no stranger to taking that brush and a little bit of blending right there. Bam. So get that. I think we'll just lighten that one up a bit too. So it didn't take long to establish all these. All these lights did it. No surrey. Bam. Look at that. Some some nice basically gold here I could come back into this and so maybe a little bit more of a greenish tint or whatever but uh, it's already there because some of the pre-glaze some of that indigo pre-glaze pre that just that already got into it so yeah I don't have to do that much more so now I'm just going to take a little bit more of that lighter color this is our, our texture here on the robe you can see at this point now I'm, I'm focusing more and more on just the uh, lighter parts. The, the raised parts are going to catch some sort of light. Speaking of light, I actually need to do a little smidge of a reflected light on the bottom of that sword there. Not too much, otherwise it'll kill all of our all the darks that we built up on that here. I'm just going to use my blending brush to try and take care of some of that. Uh, again, got to reflect something here on that. There we go. Okay. What about on the bottom edge of this side of the sword? I can see I've got to sharpen up this channel right here. Can you see that? Yeah. I might uh, throw a little bit more dark. Uh, same thing over here on this side of that channel. A little bit more here to distinguish each segment of the armor on his fingers. I'm pretty sure I need to, well, it's not really going to be a horizon line here because of the way his arm is oriented here, just kind of pointed towards the ground. So not really going to get that kind of classic horizon line. Uh, more edge here on those parts of the armor. Do I need to darken some of these edges a bit more? We'll see. I think we're good there. I'm going to take some of my indigo 
and hit a couple of darks here in the recesses. And also I have thinned down the paint a little bit more. It's not quite a pin line wash. It's pretty darn close. It's just right on the cusp, right on the borderline of being a pin line wash. Darken down a bit over here on that helmet. We have a lot of lights and middle tones, not much in the way of darks. Speaking of which, we need to add some more darks to his cloak there, and we're going to add some more highlights, but we're going to do some texture in the cloak, and we're going to try and add those little points of light here. So this is where we're getting into the extras, right? So you could just say, all right, yeah, boom, enough, done, whatever. This is the extra thing where we try and develop a little bit more of that texture there. And then the, the little fiery, almost like, again, there's a torch light or something like that, or torches around him reflecting on the armor. So we're going to do that next. To establish these little torchlight things, it can be on the tricky side, I want to say. It's, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit of a tricky thing. We've got to use our Fanchion Red here. So Fanchion Red. Might also grab a little bit of the Indian Yellow, just to make sure that stays on the warmer side, and then we have to... So if you're going to lighten red, and this is even if it's not going to be firelight, you're going to have to use some kind of yellow. So again, we'll look at this, and obviously on the, the chest here and the helmet and this shoulder, kind of prime areas to get a little bit of that. Also, too, it's best to orient that wherever you've got a darker color, like up here. So think of this as our just as a, this darker red, and then we have to sort of brighten that up a smidge with our yellow but it can you know, sometimes it could be a little too much it it's it's weird sometimes what else i'm gonna do is maybe uh something a little bit like that i uh, just just take a chance i don't know maybe it doesn't work maybe I, I don't like it at all i can just get rid of it i know on the other one I actually threw some in on his hands maybe i'm gonna try and throw a little bit of that onto the sword blades here just to make them a little different we have an awful lot of bluish gray don't we and a lot of brown too so that that might have been too much ah whatever not gonna not gonna get all upset about it now there i'm gonna have to come back with some of my some of my dark putting in a little bit of our torch light there uh, too much here can also be too much, so let's not uh, let's not go crazy with it. I will soften that a bit. See, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of stippling there. That's another way you, you can use your blending brush, or here I can just do this little bit of stippling action here. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. All right, now let's uh, head over here. This is, again, the Indian yellow. Got a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale in there just to make it lighter. Also, I guess, lends a little bit of opacity to it. And I might go one level lighter than that. And they're just little points of light here. And if something was to make me say, oh gosh, I just don't like those at all, I'll just either take a blending brush, wipe them away. There's any number of things I can do to just make that go away. It's, it's that easy. Really not difficult. Do I have, I know I have some of these over here. Yeah. And here, let's get uh, ones there along his arm. Let's hit that one on the sword blade right there. So that kind of adds a little bit of sharpness to that sword. Got a couple of these guys over here. I 
I may also have sometimes these other, they're kind of like beat up, not really sable brushes. And that's going to let me just take like the edge of this, spread that out a little bit. Some of these, they're just looking more like blobs. I want them to be very subtle, spread out. Like that. I think that's a little better now. Okay, we can come back to those later, but let's not lose sight of the, the texture that we wanted to do here on that cloth. And we'll take some of the black spinel. We'll take some of the Van Dyke brown. Do the darker part of this texture here. See the difference that makes now. A little bit back and forth. There's some thinner on this. Not a lot. Not lots of thinner. Again, keeping that to as much of a minimum as we can, because, well, the thinner, I mean, it, it will remove paint if you got too much of it on there. With acrylics, you need to obviously have a whole lot of liquid on that brush to keep the paint flowing. Oils are not quite like that. Even even when I've, with a very dry oil brush that has almost no paint on it, it's still easy. You could blend with that, actually. Not just paint with it. You could practically blend with it. And I mean like over dry oil paints. And yes, if let's say you, all you were able to get done was just the armor part and you just couldn't get to this before you had to stop for the day, the night, whatever, that is not a big deal. Because as I've discovered with my army painting series, it takes several days, if not weeks, to film. It's It can almost be advantageous sometimes to have your previous layers of oil paint be dry. It's really amazing the difference between this and the acrylics. Also, too, you got additional durability from the oils that you don't get with the acrylics. The oils are more luminous. The darks are darker. And all I use once they're done is uh, just this. It dries. Brush on the anti-shine from Army Painter. That's all it takes. I mean, that's what I did with my acrylic figures. It works just fine with the oils, too, because once paint dries, it's just paint. That's it. It's, it's nothing crazy. Now here I'm going to try and pop in some more darks while we're doing this also a uh, little bit of definition refining some areas some lines here we I'm gonna just darken that up a bit Let's see you know what I'm gonna do is uh, oh gosh I'm just I'm contemplating just to, well that wasn't supposed to be there but I'm contemplating actually just wiping that out altogether and moving it. Yeah, I'm going to move that. See, I'm entitled to make changes whenever I choose. And we just made ourselves a change right here. So I'm going to go back here to that red. And I'm going to do something here because I wanted the reflection from the sword over there. I can't have the fire reflection there too. So we'll get rid of that. I'm going to come back over here to my blue-ish color. And hit the sides of the armor there. Again, uh, thinking about reflections here. there I think that works a little bit a little bit better now see that had a little too much liquid on it see how that's spread out all over the place that is not what I was looking to have happen so you, you see there there's an example of what too much liquid on the brush can mean I mean, it's no big deal. Just come back here. I've got to add my lightest light there anyway. That's what we're going to be doing. Our last segment are just final details pretty much at this point. Just the last couple little details, and that's it. 
just to keep it relatively simple. See, that got too light there. We'll have to do something about that, too. I mean, it happens. It happens. I've got a little bit of my Prussian blue here now. We'll mix that with our radiant turquoise here. Because we've got a lot of ginger blues. This is about almost bringing in more of a sky blue here. And that's really going to be focused on the areas that are essentially pointing up towards your de facto sky. It's relatively dark also. See a little bit of blue on that sword blade a little bit of blue over there and then over here where we had our little accident uh, no big deal just cover that up here we'll have the blue go right next to the red of that torch light fire light whatever it is and that also is more like a big light Blob there. I think we've got that under a little more under control now. Yeah, I see we missed an area here with our smidge of firelight. So again, I'm going to take some of the red here. Right about there. Ah, see, there was too much liquid. I, I put that brush stroke there. I was like, whoa, that's got too much of the center on it. That's better. Yeah, I was... That was a close one. That was almost, again, another dose of too much thinner. I'm also not really doing a lot of cleaning of the brushes in between. Uh, it's I'm, I'm not that concerned about it. I also have a, a lot of secondary brushes. So if the brush is, instead of it being cleaned, I'll just use another brush because... Well, the less cleaner that you use, the drier your brush is going to be. It's going to be easier to maintain that drier brush, which is really important on so many levels. And the cleaner is really simple. And look at this, too. An added benefit, it's also dried acrylic and oil color. It's not hazardous and no vapors. So you don't have to really be super concerned about it. And you can even use it for your acrylics added bonus. No reason not to, well, I guess if you can't get it where you live, maybe that could be a reason. But otherwise, I, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good idea to get some of that. It's been really effective, I have to say. Surprisingly effective, okay. So we've got our yellow in place and such here. Let's get a another round of maybe our lightest light possibly on our cloth texture here uh, focusing mostly up here mostly on this upper reaches like so there And uh, get kind of a stippling effect here. Maybe even along the edge of the uh, robes there. You don't have to do the textured stuff. I'm only doing it because there's so many folks, they're always asking about seeing texture and that sort of thing. So if I could work it in. I try to work that in where possible. Uh, not really for myself, not the uh, biggest fan of that. We did it on Saruman's robes. I have a couple of videos also on the YouTube channel here. You can check those out. They're just a uh, check out the Lord of the Rings playlist. There's a there's a ton of videos for painting Lord of the Rings stuff. There's tons of videos here, and of course we have that many more on the Patreon page and. You can also check out the Twitch channel. That's uh, the well. The nifty thing there is you can actually well ask some questions live. Yeah, 
in the chat. Whereas here, a little difficult, a little bit difficult to do that. All right. And then once again, I'm going to let that set for as long as I can. And then that's where we're going to take our that same blending brush that you saw me use earlier. And then we just soften some of this. We don't wipe it away completely, but we do soften it up a bit. Also, just letting it be dark down towards the bottom too. Even this with the stippling that I'm doing, even that's doing a little bit of mixing already. And with each brush stroke, the, the original layers, they are getting on your brush. So you have to be willing to, if you want to have a, you know, more of a pure color that you're putting on there, you have to go back. You got to get some more, some more of that paint. Here, I'm also going to take a little bit of our uh, sky blue there and darken down a couple of more of these areas. I don't think that ever, no, that never did get the blue. All right, and I'll say that's good enough with the blue right here. And the last, what we'll do is some of our final highlights. Maybe even come back with some darks to sharpen things up, but some of those really final, juicy, bright highlights, and we're going to do that next. What remains at this point are those last last little details, mostly in the form of some brighter highlights. So what I'm going to do, take some of that. That's the quick dry white. It's basically titanium white. It doesn't have any alkyds in there. I looked at it. If it had alkyds, it would dry a whole lot faster than this. And I mean, it would be dry on the palette already by now. That's how fast the the stuff with alkyds in it dries so uh, look at that see that last little bit of brightness there on the end of the sword we need to do at the top of that blade as well there again these are these are forge world here so they're they're kind of fragile I had to reforge, so to speak, the blades just a bit. Ah, look at that. See, we've got our lighter white, and it goes down into that little, just that nice little bit of the orange right there. Now, if you look at some of the past miniatures that I did on the stream, or did on the channel here recently, the, the let's see, we had our Moria goblins, we have the cave troll and we did that under lighting well that was much more intense object source lighting and this is really not object source lighting it's just some little accents all we're trying to do with that uh, look at that sharpens up that edge and also sort of tones down a little bit of that fire glow as well on the shoulder here I think we could probably use a couple. See that chain of lights that just runs down his arm. Gotta be thinking of these things as cylinders. And then, so the other thing too, we have to sort of break up these shapes. That's what gives it that extra shiny appearance. There, when you here, we'll put our light along the top. It's not going to be a solid highlight either. And then see this? Look at that. See a little bit of a line right there. We'll do another one over here. We certainly don't have enough contrast between those two surfaces. We'll do just a bit right there on that top edge. Let's hit this top edge as well. So it's a lot of these edges here. But this is one of those one of those areas where it's it becomes more up to you how far you want to take this. Like I said, for me. Well, it's pretty essential that I, I kind of continue the process, keep going a little bit further. For you, you could have uh, possibly stopped uh, half an hour ago or anywhere in between. 
but I think these last little bright highlights like this really do. That's what gives it that extra pop, that metallic look, that shiny look. We also need to do this on his hands right here. So I will be, I'm going to be doing some more on this. Uh, may not show up in the photos or whatever, but I will be doing more on this because well, I want these guys to really be a showcase set. But I also don't want this to be a two hour video. So I'm just going to show you these last few bright highlights here every so often you sure need to look at look at that see how look at how much further we can go with our lights here we try to save that brightest light highlight as close to the end as possible when, once you go with that white highlight you, you have nowhere else to go i mean that's it you might as well just hang on to those brightest highlights till the end it's the most effective way to use those so get just looking for some sharper edges and the end of that sword hilt there i guess we could get some of that on his hands too So reflected light, all of those things, really, once you combine all those together, the kind of added contrast, the edges we're talking about, all that together, combine. That's what gets you to your metallic look. It's not so much the colors, right? You could, I've done me, uh, non-metallic metal in all different kinds of colors. Doesn't matter what the color is. It's... The, the reflections, do we have those sharper edges? Do we have maybe the surroundings reflected like this? Do we have it looking like a cylinder? Do we see some of the horizon line? All of those things, that's what's going to decide. Yeah, you can buy those so-called non-metallic metal color sets, those acrylic ones, it's really not going to do you any good. Especially if it you don't have the special set for, okay, the guy who's wearing a red tunic walking on a blue tile floor with orange light around him. I mean, there's all these other factors that go into it, not just usually people say, okay, it's non-metallic metal, so lots of bluish gray, and I'm good. And it's a little deeper than that. I try to show that here. Hopefully that has come through a little bit. Get these last few highlights here. On the inside of his sword and uh, on his feet. It's a delicate balance because if we put too much light on, the, on his feet here, well, that's bringing an awful lot of attention to an area that's Probably shouldn't be getting a whole lot of light to begin with, just because of where it is. But here we need some reflected light. We'll take some of that kind of warmish gray color here and drop in just a couple of quicky little reflections there. Am I, I'm just looking around to see if there's any other places where I should do a bit of reflected light now boy this has to be either softened up or ah that's more oh there we go see i just uh, took that pulled that down and essentially turned it into a bit of a line there that just uh, makes more sense with the curvature of the armor piece now here we got that dot right there that's that's not going to do very much however take this blending brush and we pull it that way now it looks like it's potentially a reflection of the sword just food for thought I am now going to try to combine that is always such a fun combo. this uh, Indian yellow man 
it can, it's uh, really got a lot of intensity to it. You combine it with, like here, the asphaltum, and all of a sudden, it does create that really nifty, sort of an amber type of a color. Now that can't all just be, it's a little too light right here. What we'll do is uh, take a little bit of our Indian yellow. Even if it's just a tiny bit of shading there, we needed something. Uh, same over here. Uh, so, okay, that's that's more like it. We just needed a little more action there. However, see, we got some more orange there, but then it's almost more of a green down here. That's just more interesting. It's super subtle. It's not like people are going to be looking at it and they see that right away, but it's it's there. <laughs> They'll they won't notice it, but they will notice it. How does that sound? If it's not there, they will notice. If it is there, well, then their eye will just go, okay, yeah, that, that belongs there. So here again, some more of these little lines and dots to break up the surface here as much as we can. But not too much. There there are times that I'll go back in and simplify where I said, well, I really did want some different colors there, but no, it was too much. We're doing this again with some reflected light here where all oh, these are, oh, that, that's too much, too much liquid on there. I could see that coming. A little less to look at. Also too, well, look where my hands are on the brush here. They're, they're nowhere near the ferro, right? They're not, none of this. Heck, I can't even reach the miniature that way. That's not going to do me much good. So well, I'm going to say we're drawing to a close here. If you could you know, drop the, do the whole like and like thing and subscribe and the bell and all the usual chitter chatter that you hear from YouTubers saying, hey, follow me and subscribe and all that. Well, that would be super handy. I always have the Twitch channel link in the description as well as long as well as the patreon page and the patreon page at this point if there's not 900 hours worth of videos in the army painter pledge level well we're getting darn close to it and every month i'm usually producing somewhere between 20 to 24 hours worth of new videos yes indeed Blending brush, we talked about it here for the texture, right? See this little stippling action that I'm doing? We're not wiping it like this. That's just going to smear it or just eliminate it entirely. Here, that little tap, 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 that just serves to mute it ever so slightly. There, look at that. If you're ever looking for, say, finished images of things, well, I have tons of those on my Instagram, and that's just at Wapelius, same as the, same as the Twitch channel. Ah, that's just what I'm looking for there again. It's a little bit of a tap, tap, tap. Look at all the extra paint that's sitting on the end of that brush there. And in some ways, taking off that extra paint, well, I mean, this will dry a little bit faster as well. So I think we've come up pretty close and not a whole lot of time to our previous Nazgul right here. I think that works just fine. So thanks again, everybody. I really do appreciate you checking out the video again. If you could drop a like on it, that would be really appreciated too. And I'm going to catch you on the next tutorial video.